Well, good morning, boys and girls. I hope you all are doing well uh, this day. I'm so excited to be with you again today, uh, to be able to share God's word with you, to be able to sing with you, and to pray. And that's what we're about to do. We are going to do all of those things. Um, but I pray that your week has gone well and that you've been excited about gathering together this Sunday. Well, uh, we are going to do that very thing. We are going to pray right now. So I want you to gather your things together. I want you to calm yourself. Let's go before the, Thor, the Lord humbly and let's bow our heads. Let's quiet our lips. Let's close our eyes, okay? Let's pray. Father, thank you that we have the privilege to gather together today. Thank you that uh, we could be uh, at church, um, but Lord, I am thankful that we can even gather uh, this way even at home um, uh, via the, uh, the streams um, so that we can um, study your word together with the children, uh, that we can sing with one another. Thank you for the privilege to be able to teach them. I pray this would be a blessing to them, their families. Um, help us now to worship you well. That is our chief end, Lord, that we would worship you well and right. Uh, help us to not be distracted, but to focus upon you right now, I pray. We love you. Thank you for blessing us with your kindness in so many ways that we no longer have to go to a priest. We no longer have to go to a temple to give sacrifice, but you, through your son, Jesus Christ, have made a way unto yourself once and for all. There's, there's no other sacrifice that needs to be made. Christ has perfected that. And we rejoice in that, Lord, and thank you for it. Thank you for seeking us, for, for choosing us, Lord, to, uh, to be your, your children. Help us to honor you as you have called us, Lord. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Well, we are going to sing a song called Ancient of Days, boys and girls. This is a song I told you last week that we were going to sing a new song. Well, this is a new song to us singing here this morning, but uh, you have actually sung this in church before. Um, uh, Pastor Clay has, has been leading you in that and uh, leading our families together as we sing this song. But it is a great song for you to learn, to memorize these words as we exalt the Father. And it teaches us about Him that even though the nations rage, even though the kingdoms rise and fall, there is still one King reigning over all that god is the that king is the god that we serve boys and girls if you've ever been afraid you can sing this song to your father to the god of the nations you can say even though the dread of night overwhelms my soul even though i'm afraid he is here with me i am not alone his love is sure and he knows my name for God is the Ancient of Days. He, there is none before Him. There is none um, above Him. God is alone in that. He is set apart from all of us. We get to sing about this th this morning. So I'm excited about that. Let's do that now as we sing Ancient of Days. stand 
All the power, all the glory, I will trust in His name. For my God is the Ancient of Days. Though the dread of night, though the dread of night overwhelms my soul, He is here with me. I am not alone. Oh, His love is sure, and He knows my name. For my God is the Ancient of Days. Though I may not see that the future brings, I will watch and wait for the Savior King. Then my joy completes, standing face to face in the presence of the ancients of days. None above him, none before him, all of time in his hands. For his throne it shall remain and ever stand. All the power, all the glory, I will trust in his name. For my God is the Ancient of Days. For my God is the ancient of days. Good job singing, boys and girls. I'm excited to be able to teach you that song or at least uh, learn it better with you all. Um, it is a blessing to be able to sing, uh, to be able to uh, sing these truths about God because it helps us memorize those things that Scripture teaches us. It is a, a true blessing to be able to do that. And so I'm thankful to be able to do that. I hope you are grateful as well and that you'll continue to sing that song. Make sure your moms and dads uh, print off the lyrics so that you'll know um, the words as, as we're singing together. Uh, but now we are going to dive into God's Word. And we are going to be focusing on something this morning that Pastor Farrell has been teaching for quite some time now um, over the past year. A little over a year now, and and uh, we are going to be studying in Ecclesiastes um, uh, just to begin with this morning, uh, as we've been studying uh, so uh, we've been studying Solomon, King Solomon. Uh, one of the things we know that he wrote was Ecclesiastes, the wisest man who ever lived. Um, he's going to be telling us about life, teaching us about life, and the importance of God in our lives. Um, how. How life is really futile. It's it's vanity. There's without God, and um, I'm 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 looking forward to being able to um, uh, to teach uh, you this morning and to um, share this truth with you. But can any of you tell me what you would like to be doing, say a year from now, at this time a year from now? What would you like to be doing? Well, I'm sure there's lots of things that you would like to be doing. Um, you would probably like to not have to be worried about um, a disease, and maybe not have to worry about everybody wearing a mask or, or keeping their hands sanitized and all that kind of stuff. Um, hopefully you, you might be thinking about, well, I'd like to be going back to school for real. Um, all these things that might be in your mind. Well, what about five years from now? What about 15 years from now? Oh, man, that seems like a lifetime probably to many of you. But maybe what are you thinking about that you might want to do or be when you grow up, when you become an adult, when you are outside your mom and dad's house, you're living on your own, what are some things that you would like to do on your own? 
Have you thought about that? Have you asked those questions? What do you want to do with this life? Well, look at these objects with me. Do any of you know what this is? You know what this is? Oh, it's got numbers on it and I can measure things with it. Yeah, it's a tape measure. It's a ruler. It's a tape measure. Okay. All right. Well, what about what about this? Can you tell me what these are? Yeah, they're scissors. They're scissors. What about this? Anybody do you guys know what this is? Yeah, this is a tape dispenser. A tape dispenser. Well, as you think about these three things, why do they exist? Why do they exist? Why does a tape measure exist? Why does a pair of scissors exist? Why does a tape dispenser exist? As you think about that, what are some things that come to mind? Well, a, a tape measure exists because it's, it's a helpful tool for us to use to measure things. It's something that we can clip to our pocket and I can carry it around and I can pull it off and I can quickly reach out and I can measure something that's really long. This one, I can measure something up to 25 feet long. All right, what about a pair of scissors? Well, scissors are handy because we can take those and we can cut paper. We can cut out shapes. Uh, we, can, we can take them and, um, and we can cut uh, pictures out that maybe you've colored. What about a tape dispenser? Well, a tape dispenser is helpful because, you know, you might buy a roll of tape, but, you know, if you've ever done that before where you just had a little roll of tape and you're trying to peel off uh, tape and then you have to cut it, maybe you use those scissors to cut the tape. Man, that's so tedious. And a tape dispenser, you can just sit right down and you just pull that tape off and boom, ah, I got tape. Now those pictures that I measured out, those pictures that I've now cut out, I can take them and I can tape them up on the wall. Well, there's purpose in their existence. These tools, these objects, there's purpose in their existence. Well, have you ever thought about why you exist? Why do you exist? Why do I exist? Well, that may not be a question that you've pondered before, but what is the point? Does, does all of this make sense to you? living in this world that we live in today, why am I here? Have you ever asked that question before? What is the meaning of life? Do I have a purpose here, like the tape measure, like the scissors or the tape dispenser? Most people wrestle with these thoughts at some point in their lives, and King Solomon surely did. Thoughts like these are recorded in the Bible, in the book of Ecclesiastes. Why do we exist? So if you have your Bibles, I want you to go ahead and turn to Ecclesiastes. Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 1. And here we're going to uh, read about how God made Solomon a wise man, and in his wisdom, he began to question things in his life, wondering, you know, why do I exist, God? What is my purpose here? Why do I have all of this wisdom, maybe, he would have asked. He ruled over Israel for 40 years, boys and girls. He wrote wise sayings in the book of Proverbs. We know that. We learned about that. And he was respected by kings and queens. So the wisest man to have ever lived, the one who was respected by kings and queens, he was wiser than anyone else in the world, he pondered a, que a key question. He would ponder a key question. What is the meaning of life? Even though he seemed to have the answers to everything, he still pondered the questions. You see him there gazing out his, his, uh, his window, looking at people working, and just pondering in his mind, what is the meaning of life? What is, what is God really doing with me in this life? Why? Why, is, why has God put me here on this earth? Well, life has purpose only with God. And we're going to learn about that today, boys and girls. We are going to learn about how 
God has given us purpose in Him. And Solomon learned that very, uh, very well. The first chapter of Ecclesiastes describes the futility and the vanity of life. And the author, Solomon, declares that everything is futile. Everything is, is, is really is, is, is vanity, he says. Uh, it's, it's, it's pointless, is, is, is really. He, uh, he makes an observation about life, about generations, they come and they go, and the sun sets and it rises and it sets again. He says, the wind blows around and, and, and around, the streams they flow without ceasing. Ecclesiastes 1, verses 4 through 7. Well, how did Solomon describe life? Well, let's look at our Bibles, because that's where we get all truth. So look at your Bibles in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, and let's begin reading verse 1. The words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem. That's Solomon. Absolute futility, says the teacher. Absolute futility. Everything is futile. What does a person gain for all his efforts that he labors at under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises, the sun sets, paint, uh, panting. It returns to the place where it rises. Gusting to the south, turning to the north, turning, turning goes the wind, and the wind returns its, in its cycles. All the streams flow to the sea, yet the sea is never full. To the place where the streams flow, there they flow again. All things are, are wearisome, more than anyone can say. The eye is not satisfied by seeing, or the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. Can one say about anything, look, this is new. It has already existed in the ages before us. There is no remembrance of those who come before and of those who will come after. There will also be no remembrance by those who follow them. I, the teacher, have been king over Israel in Jerusalem. I applied my mind to examine and explore through wisdom all that is done under heaven. God has given people this miserable task to keep them occupied. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun and have found everything to be futile. A pursuit of the wind. What is a crooked again? Or what is crooked cannot be strength, straightened. What is lacking cannot be counted. I said to myself, See, I have amassed wisdom far beyond all those who were over Jerusalem before me, and my mind has thoroughly grasped wisdom and knowledge. I applied my mind to know wisdom and knowledge, madness and folly. I learned that this, I, I learned that this too is a pursuit of the wind. For with much wisdom is much sorrow. As knowledge increases, grief increases. Boys and girls, this doesn't sound like a lot of hope here. <laughs> this doesn't sound very encouraging to begin with. You know, Solomon, the wisest man to have ever lived, he's, he's not necessarily lifting up our spirits here in this moment, is he? Well, how does Solomon describe life? He says it's futile. He says it's meaningless in, in verse 2. Solomon saw that people were born, they worked hard, then they died. That's what, he, that's what he saw. In nature, the sun came up and then it went down. The wind, it blows around and around. And what for? Ecclesiastes 1 verse 8 tells us. Now Solomon saw that people were not really happy in life. Something seeming to be missing. Apart from God, life seemed meaningless. Life seemed meaningless apart from God. And God is the creator of all things. He made the world and everything in it. He made us. He ma he cre uh, God created everything for His glory. So boys and girls, why do we exist? 
what is our purpose here in this life? Those were questions that even Solomon asked the wisest man to have ever lived. He looked and he pondered. He considered it. Why, God? Why? God gives everything a purpose in this life. But he does it through his son, Jesus Christ. So, boys and girls, as you consider your own life, and maybe you look at, at uh, objects in your life, maybe you look at a tape measure, or maybe you look at a pair of scissors or a pencil, or maybe you look at a chair or a guitar, or you look at a car and you think, well, I know why those things exist. A guitar exists so that someone can play it and so that it can be a beautiful sound to our ears. So the person can have enjoyment and fulfillment in playing this instrument. Or a chair exists so that we will have a, a place to sit and to rest. We will have a place to sit so that we can have a conversation with another individual. All these things make sense. But why do I exist? What is my purpose here? I'm going to breathe. I'm going to live. I'm going to go and act, be active. But boys and girls... People who don't know the Lord, what is their purpose here on this earth? To just enjoy it right now so that it will go away forever? That's a sad reality. And that's what Solomon is, is getting to. He's saying that apart from God, this life is really meaningless. We only have one moment to enjoy it. We only have one moment to, to enjoy the things of this world. And that's why... People who don't know the Lord, they seek and they search and they strive to enjoy everything that they can here in this moment because it is all that they have. And that's why we have to plead with people to say, no, there is more to this life. There is more to this life than, than living and dying. There's more than, to this life than, than just you know, trying to do the next thing, trying to, um, to understand uh, uh, all the, the little bits and pieces of, of what God has created, God has created us and purposed us for His glory, boys and girls. And Solomon saw that people were not really happy in this life because they were pursuing the things of this world. Now, you probably do not spend much time considering deep philosophical questions or thoughts, but... The Bible encourages us to use God's Word, like Ecclesiastes, to build a foundation that will last into our adulthood. There is a reason and a purpose that Pastor Farrell has spent this last long while teaching us through Ecclesiastes. That apart from God, there is no hope in this world. And boys and girls, if, if I could... If I could help you understand that by shouting that louder and louder and louder, I would. But, boys and girls, God must make that evident to you. But He will do that in His Word. And that's why I encourage you so much. Open God's Word. Read it. Parents, open God's Word. Teach it to your children. Help them, help them see the truth that God has declared already. It will build the foundation for their adulthood so that as you grow, you don't start to say, well, why? Why am I even here? You're in middle school and you're thinking, what is the purpose of middle school? What is the purpose of high school? Why? Why? All I'm looking forward to is I want to I want to have the next best toy that's coming out. Maybe I want to be nine years old. I want to be eight years old. I want to be 12 years old. I want to be a teenager so I can get into the youth group. I want to be 16 years old so I can start to drive a car. I want to get older so maybe I can get married and have a spouse. Oh, boys and girls, we just look forward to the next thing and next thing, thinking that in that achievement, we are going to find fulfillment. We are going to find happiness. But boys and girls, happiness comes in pursuing the Lord. That joy that, that we understand the Scripture talks about comes through His Son, Jesus Christ. That's what we're learning about today. We must keep our focus upon God and His Him as Creator. God created everything for His glory, and He gives everything a purpose through His Son. 
Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, there's a thief who comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. Jesus, God, understands that this world tries to offer us everything to have enjoyment and fulfillment, but none of it will fulfill those things. We can only find joy and fulfillment in the Lord. Ultimately, purpose and hope is found in Jesus Christ, who died for our sins and He rose again so that we could have life in Him and life eternal in heaven. Boys and girls, have you thought about that? Have you thought about the reality that, that you have a purpose here on this earth? Our chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. Our chief end is to, is to continue to proclaim the message of the good news of Jesus Christ because that is where we find hope. That is where we find purpose. Maybe you haven't fully understood that. Maybe you haven't fully uh, accepted that as the truth, received that as the truth. Well, I pray that, that you would ask God for help because He's the only one who can provide it. He is the one who will help you understand those things, and He will give purpose to you in this life through His Son, Jesus Christ. God has answered the foundational questions for this life. Solomon sought, and he sought, and he sought. Solomon had everything in this life. He had, he had wealth beyond measure. He had he had every toy in the world. He had beautiful palaces, every book to have ever existed. He had, uh, um, he had anything and everything because he had perfect wisdom. He had wisdom from the Lord. But even in all that, Solomon perceived this life without God is meaningless. I can have everything in this world and yet be hopeless. I can have all the things that this world has to offer and yet look at it and say this is meaningless. Boys and girls, don't take my word for it. Take God's word for it. He tells us that. In Jesus, we find purpose in this life and look forward to the eternal life with Him. I pray that you are looking forward to eternal life with Him. But you can only do that if you've trusted in Jesus Christ, if you've put your hope in Him. If you've called unto Him and said, Forgive me, Lord, for my sins. I know there is only one hope. I know there is only one Savior. And you have offered that to me. Please, God, forgive me of my sins. Save me from my sins. Turn me away from my, from my sin. Help me to do what is right, Lord. I want to trust in you. I want to hope in you that this life won't be meaningless, that I can live to bring glory to you forever. Boys and girls, why can we trust God? That's our, our question. Why can we trust God? Well, we can trust God because everything God does is for His glory and our good. Everything God does is for His glory and our good. And we might not always think that it is for our good because it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like, well, I'm enjoying this and this is the most wonderful thing I've ever experienced. Sometimes that good is, is uh, punishment. Sometimes that good is hardship or a trial. But He is growing us and He's strengthening us to become more like His Son, Jesus Christ. And we find joy even in those things. We are to find joy in our suffering because God has given us hope in that. Because He's doing everything for His glory and our good. Let's look at, let's consider uh, this verse. Psalm 100, verse 5. Can you read that with me? The Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and His faithfulness to all generations. His steadfast love endures forever, and His faithfulness endures to all generations. Boys and girls, this is great truth that comes directly from God. 
perfect wisdom from God and that we can have hope in Him. I pray that you will trust these truths, that the Lord is good, His steadfast love endures forever, and His faithfulness to all generations. God is faithful. He's faithful to forgive us, to cleanse us of all unrighteousness, and do that in His Son, Jesus Christ. He's promised that to you today. Let's pray. God, I'm so grateful that you have given us your truth. It gives us purpose in this life. For we would be like Solomon, looking out and upon this world and saying, what is the point? It is meaningless. It is futile. Yet you have given us hope in your son, Jesus Christ. You, God, have given us hope. This, this life apart from you would be hopeless. Like a ship without a sail. The, the hymn, hymn sings. God, we have hope in you. May we trust in you. I pray for these children that they would, that they would cast themselves upon you, that they would, they would ask you, Lord, help me to, um, uh, to cling to you and have hope in you, knowing that my life is, is without purpose apart from you. I pray that we would find wisdom in your truth that would lead us into a life that would seek you forever. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, boys and girls, I pray that you have a wonderful rest of your week. Uh, I love you, and I'm praying for you guys. And uh, have a wonderful rest of your Sunday as well. Take care.